Bill Clinton totally in his element <laughs> talking presidential politics, right? Chris Hahn, do you think it's appropriate, though, for a former president of the other party to be chiming in on the GOP field this early? Well, I think what he said was all very positive. I, I don't think you're going to see President Clinton until the heat of the campaign at the end, if needed, come in in any real hyperpartisan way. I think he's trying, as, as people say, uh, to be an elder statesman. I think everything he said about Huntsman and Romney is true. Uh, they are running very good campaigns. And I think Bachman is surprising a lot of people, especially Sarah Palin, who, you know, I think uh, Bachman's kind of replacing as the conservative female voice in America because she's clearly uh, better prepared to speak on a lot of topics than Sarah is and has more experience in government. Jamie, do you think uh, when he said that he was more impressed by Mitt Romney this time, do you think that's really an authentic kind of admiration for the candidate this time around? Well, I think there's no question he, he, what he gave was actually a pretty incisive look at the field right now. Mitt Romney is certainly the front, front runner. The ads that he's running certainly are, are putting him against Obama, not against the primary field. So I think he was right on there. I think with Huntsman, he's actually just paying back a compliment that Huntsman uh, wrote to him in a letter that actually we at the Daily Caller uncovered, uh, right. uh, praising, praising Bill Clinton as being this smart and great leader. So it was just a little payback. Huntsman, there. you know, I think a lot of Democrats are going to like Huntsman. A lot of independents are going to like Huntsman's like the one guy in the field yes. that really worries us yes. uh, as and Democrats. And that's why conservatives don't necessarily it, like It's funny him. how that He's works that way. <laughs> uh, Mary, his comments about Michelle Bachman, yeah. very interesting to me because Bill Clinton is a very visceral politician. And I think what he's picking up from Michelle Bachman is that she's got an emotional bond with the, uh, with the voters. Yeah, and you know, we've got that Tea Party element that love her. And I, I agree, actually agree with you. I think he's really playing the elder statesman here. And he's actually coming off as, as very, very credible and very respectful. And I give him a lot of credit for it. And I don't know if he's necessarily going to get more partisan as time goes on. And I, w I really give him a lot of credit for what he said about Michelle Bachman because the media is just, you know, they're not well, going to give her a fair listen, shot. They're just going to, to rip could, her to shreds. If, if Bachman could figure out the difference between John Wayne and John Wayne Gacy, she has a legitimate shot of winning Iowa. Well, wait, I, I mean, wait, she wait, is, wait, wait, she wait. is a, a, a true conservative, and conservative voters are going to like her. But, we as liberals and Democrats and progressives, we we won't ever but, like her. Independents will, like will never vote will for her. you like her when she visits all 57 states? I, I don't think Michelle Bachman has a chance <laughs> in the world you know, of being but president But she does have a chance to be nominated. But note what Bill Clinton said. He didn't praise her policies. He praised the politician in him. He's praising right. the story. He knows right. that yes, Americans like true. a great and story. Is, and, and, and this is what she has. She, she had 23 foster kids. It's an amazing story. Yep. And he's noting that. And it's undeniable. And the, it's problem, an in America, the problem in American politics today is that we're more attracted to the story than actually finding That's solutions true. to well, solve wait, the problems in this country. Minute, wait a minute, That's Chris. How we I, mean, I, have, what, I think what exactly. Bill Clinton <laughs> is actually picking up on is the fact that Michelle Bachman has a real authenticity to yes. her. And that's and what that voters connects. are responding People to. And remember that Michelle Bachman is championing constitutionally limited government, fiscal responsibility, and free markets. Now, Han, you guys on the left might think that those principles well, are wacky, uh, uh, but frankly, that's what the Founding you know what? Fathers intended, I, and that's I, where the most Americans The Founding Fathers are. created a constitution right. that was a living, breathing document. It wasn't supposed to mm. die in the 1780s. It's supposed to evolve over time with case law and amendments. We've had case law amendments and the Constitution being interpreted by uh, the Supreme Court and by Congress creating new laws within the framework of the Constitution. Chris, she I, does I not believe that. She thinks I, we should go back to 1787 Chris, I tell you, and live with that. The majority of the American people are with Michelle Bachman, and you saw the results in November 2010. That's, the majority absolutely. of the American people believe that the Constitution should be okay, followed. Mary, but, go ahead. No, but I, I think Monica is absolutely right. You're right. A majority of the American people uh, respond to what she's saying, and she's really hitting a, a, an emotional accord in the American people. So I, I guess you're saying that the American people don't know what they're talking about then because they clearly don't understand the Constitution, well, according I, to I you. Well, I think the American people uh, vote in the moment. And I think they had a moment, uh, you know, last year that was a conservative swing because they were not happy with the direction of the country because of the economy. It was not based on the policies, but the economy. We'll see what happens in a year and a half. Uh, I, just, I just want to know what you have yeah. what, what you have a problem with 1787 for. I think that was a pretty good year. I, I, I think it was a great year, but if the, if the yeah. Constitution stopped evolving, evolving in 1787, and this country would have been gone a long time ago. By the way, ago. we're coming up on Independence Day weekend, yes. right. celebrating right. 1776. Uh, Jamie, last question to you on the subject. For whom do you think Bill Clinton votes next year, Obama or the Republican candidate? <laughs> you never know. It's a close call. Well, it's, it's, it's <laughs> depends how strategic he is. If, he, if, he's plot, if he's plotting for Clinton to run, uh, Hillary to run uh, four years from now, maybe he votes he, for the Republican. Well, Hillary can run four years from now and, either way. And this so is it's why, uh, yeah. this yeah, but, is why you but, never know what goes on in that Clinton voting booth. All right, country. guys, Swing please right. stand by. <laughs> Time to check in now with Greta Van Sestern and see what she's got on the record. Can we continue now with our great American panel? Welcome back, guys. Okay, so there are all these reports today that the Treasury Secretary, Tim Geithner, 
wants out of the administration. And when I saw those reports, I went, wait, he's still there? <laughs> How did this guy hold on to his job for so long, Jamie? I think I think he's close to the president. They're close in age. They've always said to have a bond. Um, I think he's probably just tired. It's a tough job. It's, it's time for him to go. It's going to be interesting who he's going to choose next. I think ideologically, Obama would like to choose the guy with the question marks who does the commercials, the free money guy. Oh, uh, but but politically, politically, Not a bad choice, I, politically, right? politically, I think it would be wise for him to choose a businessman well, in, in the job because he has none in the administration other than his new chief. When of I saw this on the agenda today, I, I, I made some calls. This is more of an idea. Than an actual plan for him to leave right now. I think he's just kind of talking off the top of his head when he said this this afternoon. So, uh, you know, I, and like you said, these are difficult jobs. This is probably the most difficult job in Washington right now, given the state of the economy. Uh, and it's very difficult, and he's under a lot of pressure. He's got young kids, I think, or, or, or kids are still in school. I, I think it's, you know, it's still too early to tell if he's going to actually leave before the end of the first term. I, I would bet he doesn't. Mary, if he decides to go, he's going to join this long conga line of Obama economic advisors who have bailed off no. the sinking good ship Obama. <laughs> uh, we had Larry Summers, Christina Romer, Peter Orzag, and Austin Goolsby, who's leaving uh, next week or in a couple of, of other weeks. And did you notice, and I think you made a good point, Jamie, they all went back to their academic jobs. Right. And he needs a business person in there. And I think it would be a really wise decision for him to get away from the well, academics, get away from the thinkers, and get into someone who's a doer. Maybe someone who pays his taxes would be a, a good idea. <laughs> here's you the know, thing. Just to, to start. run the IRS. The, yeah, yeah to run the IRS. So, you you're asking have some, way too much. Know, the American people don't care who the Treasury Secretary is. Se secretary oh, well, I think they, they care. In, they in care that they have jobs. They yes. care that they have jobs. They, they, you know, most Americans, if you poll them, they probably don't even know who Tim Geithner is. So uh, unless they read his name at the bottom, of their dollar bill. Oh, no, I think sure, that's pretty I, insulting to the American but, uh, people. I think no, they know who no, this No, I, I think that the American is. people care that the economy gets moving in the right direction, and, and, and they want to see the president and Congress work to make that happen. The Treasury Secretary is an instrument of the president. Considering, considering how bad the economy is, I think Geithner hopes the American people don't know his name. Well, you know, <laughs> uh, under uh, Treasury Secretary Geithner, he has overseen nearly $4 trillion added to the national debt, more than any Treasury Secretary in the history of the United States. That's embarrassing, and it's counterproductive and destructive. On the well, other Congress hand, approved that. One. Congress approved that debt, and it takes two to tango. There are Republicans in the con Congress. They Who had control the Congress. They had they had a filibuster. Yeah, they could have filibuster. There was Republican votes in those in all of those bills. So it does take two to tango, and and of course. Uh, you're also counting TARP money that came in under the previous president, who was a Republican, that he demanded Congress pass. Well, you know what? Uh, something else that caught my eye today, the former Fed chairman, Alan Greenspan, said that the $2 trillion of QE1 and QE2 printing by the Fed had little to no effect on the economy. That is staggering. Those of us conservatives who were screaming about this before they decided to go down the road of QE1 and QE2, we were saying, don't print, stop spending. They did it anyway, and now look. Yeah, I mean, the economy, look, look what President Obama said in 2009 when he passed the stimulus. He said the unemployment wouldn't go above 8 percent. It's now at 9.1. It reached 10. By his own metric, he has failed. All right, let's switch Stop. gears, guys, because uh, Mitt Romney, who is the front runner in the GOP field, he released a brand new ad, very tough against Obama and his dismal jobs record. Roll it. Good to be back in Pennsylvania. I just came from Allentown Metalworks, where I had a chance to visit with workers there. The Allentown Metalwork is set to close its doors on Friday. This was hailed as a symbol of hope by President Barack Obama last year when he promoted his jobs plan. Wow, guys, that is Love such it. a powerful ad. And you know what? The Romney campaign went back and looked at the most powerful tagline that Margaret Thatcher used hmm. in her first campaign, which was, labor isn't working. And he's commandeered that. He's given the Thatcher campaign the full credit. But that is a very effective campaign when this is going to be all about jobs, jobs, jobs. You know, and that, that, that ad is so effective because it is something that everyone can understand. You don't have to know who Tim Geithner is. You don't have to know what the, right. about the debt ceiling. You don't know anything. All you have to know is that people are losing jobs. And I guarantee you, everyone in that, in that area where well, that ad is running knows someone it, who Chris, lost a job. Exactly. And Chris, so unlike in 2008, this 
time Obama has to run on a record, and it's about oh, a small exactly. record. Listen, it is an effective ad, but it's a misleading ad. It doesn't take into effect, account that most of those jobs are lost in the first six months of his presidency. That said, as effective as this ad is, and as effect, you know, and as, as hard as he attacks Obama, it still doesn't get Romney past the South Carolina firewall to his nomination for the presidency. Jamie? I was actually born in Allentown. Uh, I can't <laughs> speak to the job performance there, but it's effective because it plays to Romney's strength as a tremendous businessman versus Obama, who is never a businessman. That's Good exactly point. right. And look, they've spent us into a Keynesian coma over the last two and a half years, and now it's time to give free market, small government uh, principles. Well, the free market, try, small government principles you let us down chance. this road. <laughs> it's it's how we got here, Monica. All right, you guys. know that. It, oh, I know you know. to be that. continued. So oh, great and listening to Alan Greenspan. All right, all right. <laughs> 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 hook on.